Phantom Heritage. It's great to have you. My name is Reverend Brendan and uh, welcome to our service uh, this morning. Now, uh, I wonder how strong you're feeling today. Are you feeling strong? Have you been doing lots of training? Maybe you've been going for runs. Maybe you're good at aerobics, I don't know. Are you feeling strong today? Well, actually today we're gonna to see that physical strength is only just one part of our, our strength as people. Actually, more important than how physically strong we are is how spiritually strong we are today. And my prayer is that as we have our, our reading and our service today, that it might encourage you to be strong in the Lord, to trust Jesus even when times are hard. Let's pray as we start our service. Lord, speak to us that we might hear your word. Move amongst us that we may behold your glory. Receive our prayers that we may learn to trust you. Amen. Well, at the beginning of this service, it's important that we come in an attitude of repentance for the forgiveness of our sins. We've seen over the past few weeks in Acts 
that the message of forgiveness in Jesus' name, because he died on the cross, was central to that uh, to the apostles' message about what Christians believe. And so it's right now at the start of this season of Lent that we come to God in an attitude of repentance, looking to that, that Good Friday cross, that Easter Sunday resurrection for the forgiveness and hope that we need. The gospel calls us to turn away from sin and to be faithful to Christ. And as we offer ourselves to him in penitence and faith, we renew our confidence and trust in his mercy. Jesus Christ, risen Master and triumphant Lord, we come to you in sorrow for our sins. We confess to you our weakness and unbelief. We have lived by our own strength and not by the power of your resurrection. In your mercy forgive us. We have lived by the light of our own eyes, as faithless and not believing. In your mercy, forgive us. We have lived for this world alone and doubted our home in heaven. In your mercy, forgive us. Lord, hear us and help us. May the Father forgive us by the death of his Son, and strengthen us to live in the power of the Spirit all our days. Amen. They preached the gospel in that city and won a large number of disciples. Then they returned to Lystra, Iconium and Antioch, strengthening the disciples and encouraging them to remain true to the faith. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God, they said. Paul and Barnabas appointed elders for them in each church and, with prayer and fasting, committed them to the Lord, in whom they had put their trust. After going through Pisidia, they came to Panthalia, and when they had preached the word in Perga, they went down to Atalia. From Atalia they sailed to Antioch, where they had been committed to the grace of God for the work they had now completed. On arriving there, they gathered the church together and reported all that God had done through them and how he had opened a door of faith to the Gentiles. And they stayed there for a long time with their disciples. Can you think of the hardest thing that you've ever had to do? I'm sure we can all think of many times uh, that we've had hardship in our lives, uh, like getting up to a screaming baby in the middle of the night, or cooking uh, Christmas dinner for 20 people, uh, or taking exams that we really hate. But a lot of things that we go through, the hard times, are often the best, or have the best outcome. I remember uh, back in 2007, I ran the London Marathon. Uh, it was so hot and um, I hit my wall. And uh, if you don't know what that is, it's basically when you are running and uh, you face the time in the race or the run where your legs go, I'm not moving anymore. So I got to that stage and uh, I stopped and a guy at the side of the road with a refreshing drink just said, aren't you supposed to be running? He doesn't know my pain! But even though uh, it was one of the hardest things I've ever done, it was one of the best things too. Uh, well, one of the best things when I got to the end anyway, uh, and I felt a great achievement in my life. So another question then, is following Jesus hard or easy? Well, it appears that the disciples did not find it easy. If we look back at our passage down at verse 22, 
Uh, Paul and Barnabas sa says this, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. And they did. The disciples may have not have found things that they went through for Jesus easy, but I'm telling you now that they definitely would have said and do say that it is worth it. So whatever hard times of Jesus we face, whether getting teased for being a Christian, getting up on a Sunday morning for church, people looking down on you, even getting rejected for following the Bible, just remember that the disciples faced death, torment, persecution, rejection, all for the name of Jesus. And they would have said and do say, it is worth it. Trust Jesus even when it's hard. When I watch those telly programs, as I do, with people who do physically incredible things in sports or maybe in adventures where they're like, I don't know, climbing mountains or whatever, or maybe rowing across the Atlantic, I don't know, whatever it is, doing incredibly physically amazing things. Those, those telly shows about um, like the special forces and trying to do like incredible things and, and teaching civilians how to how to do that. I mean, it's just amazing to see. And what separates the people who can do incredible things, incredibly physical things, is not that they don't experience the same hardship as everyone else. They do. What separates them with the ability to do the incredible things is not just that they are physically stronger than others. Physical strength only gets you so far. What separates elite athletes or adventurers or, you know, special forces soldiers is not just a physical strength, but a strength of will and a strength of heart. I've seen programs like, you know, those SAS training civilian programs, and, uh, and it's really interesting to see who gets through. It's not necessarily the physically strongest. It's those who grunt through the pain. It's those who push when everything in their body says to give up. It's those who overcome with their strength of heart and mind. You don't need to have the strongest body when you have a strength of heart to get you through. Now, of course, most of us aren't going to be running any races like that or running up Everest or, or running into battle. We're not going to be doing those things. But all of us will experience hardship, loss, pain, isolation, maybe this year more than, than any other that you've experienced in your life. And we see here today that same principle of strength of heart to overcome hardship in your life. And that strength of heart comes from trusting Jesus. Verse 22 says this, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. One of the promises that Jesus Christ uh, gives us, he gives us lots of lovely positive ones, one is the other is that we will experience hardship. And it's not just that we will experience hardship, but there's a sense in which we must experience hardship. Let's remember the context of uh, this Acts passage today in which uh, we have. Paul and Barnabas go, go back to a city to which they've been to before. And when they were there before, Paul got stoned chucked out the city and left for dead. In fact, they thought he was dead. 
In that city where persecution against Christians was for them like experiencing a war against them. Paul encourages them that the hardships they go through are necessary to enter the kingdom of God. Remember what Jesus said also, John 15, 20, if they persecuted me, they will persecute you. Jesus prepares us to expect persecution. And we see in this passage that we should expect hardship in our life. But that still doesn't explain why we must go through hardships. We must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. Why must we do that? Well, a few questions to, that I have to highlight the necessity of the hardship to enter the kingdom of God. Firstly, let me ask you this. What is the best thing you've ever done in your life? What is the best thing that you have ever achieved? I bet it involved a huge amount of hard work. I bet it was difficult. You see, we value what is hard in many ways. We value those hard choices that we make. We value accomplishing and finishing something that almost breaks us but didn't. The Christian life is not an easy way but a hard way. Choosing Jesus means losing your own life and giving it up in gratitude for God. Take up your cross and follow me, Jesus says. It means kneeling before God and offering yourself as a son or daughter for God's purposes and not our own. For these Christians in Acts chapter 14, some of them literally lost their lives for following Jesus. For all of them, it meant choosing Jesus over an easy life or an easier life. But the best things we do in life are often the hardest things. And with a strength of will, a strength of heart, we can stand, we can run, we can overcome. I wonder, how do the hard times in your life reveal actually your deepest strength? What, when the crisis comes, what is your default position? Do you turn to your family? Do you turn to um, a friend? You see, in those moments of crisis and the difficult times, you know, and, and I see it, you know, for couples going through a really challenging time in their life, if they get through it, it seems to me they emerge stronger as a couple after the hardship that they have been through. Or I think of the deep bonds of relationship that I read of those who have, you know, maybe served in the military together. Or maybe served on a sports team together. The hard times bring a depth of relationship that was not known there before. And the same is true with God. When the rug is pulled out from our feet and we reach out to grab something or someone that's going to hold us up, clinging on to Jesus, who strengthens us by faith, that faith in which we enter the kingdom of God, is going to hold us. And it's going to deepen that relationship. In fact, without having a hardship in your life, I don't think you'll ever really know or understand what trusting Jesus actually means. It's not until you really have to pray the Lord's Prayer that says, give us today our daily bread. Have you ever prayed that for real? It's not until your health fails you it's not until your loved one dies that you truly understand what it means to trust Jesus to live for the kingdom of God and not this world because this world is going to let us down. 
Our world promises us everything but cannot deliver. We remember in this moment what we are. We are but dust. But we also remember who we are. We are loved by God. Jesus died for you. A number of us have been making um, uh, pebble uh, Ash Wednesday crosses uh, uh, this week. And if you do, do make one yourself. If you've not made one already, they're a lovely little thing to just put on the side to remind you of, of Lent, to remind you that we are but dust. This is a failing world. We're just stardust, literally. But it's not what we are that makes us valuable. It's who we are. We are people loved by Jesus, so much so that he died for us on the cross. This Lent reminds us of the frailty of life. You don't eat for a day, and you know about it. You realise how frail our bodies are. Lent reminds us of that frailty of life but yet also with the certainty of love, hope, forgiveness and eternal life shown in the cross and resurrection to come. Our strength is not our bodies, nor just our minds. It's not as if it's mind over matter. We may even struggle in mind. Our strength is our heart, our soul, our faith our trust in Jesus. You call me out upon the waters The great unknown Where feet may fail There I find you in the mystery In oceans deep My faith will stand And I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise my soul Rest in your embrace For I am yours And you are mine Your grace abounds in deep as war surrounds me You've never failed And you won't stop now I will call upon your name And keep my eyes above the waves When oceans rise my soul Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders Let me walk upon the waters Wherever you would call me Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander 
my faith will be made stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk. Stronger in the presence of my Savior. Spirit, lead me where my trust is without borders. Let me walk upon the waters wherever you would call me. Take me deeper than my feet could ever wander. My faith will be made stronger. Acts 14.22, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. And what we've already seen is that the best things that we have done in our own lives or our best accomplishments are often in those hardest of times as we overcome them. The hardest times reveal or can reveal a deep strength. And for Christians, the hardest times can reveal a deep strength in Jesus. Are you going to choose the easy way or the hard way? I'll be frank with you. Your life might be a whole lot easier if you weren't a Christian. I mean, I'm not exactly selling it, but that... That is the case. Of course, the Christian life is full of joy. It's a privilege to have that close relationship with God. Wonderful. The benefits are huge. We have God with us now, the certainty of God with us forever, a heavenly hope. But life now might be easier if you weren't a Christian. Think of the money you would save by not giving it to the church. (laughs) Think of the time you'd save by not going to church or serving in church, or praying. Think of those difficult decisions we have to make about what it's morally right to do, this or that. Easier just to do what others do, no? Becoming a Christian is to make a life-changing life of sacrifice for God. For Christians in Acts, they were literally hounded, persecuted, hunted, and even tried to be killed. Jesus calls you to follow him. And he went to the cross in his ultimate life of sacrifice. He does not call you to a life of ease, but rather a hard graft life, but of purpose, joy and satisfaction. Some of the most satisfying things that we do and accomplish are also the things that are most sacrificing and hard. So how do you find strength to go through the hardships to the kingdom of God? Well, Paul strengthens their faith and he does that through his preaching. And my prayer is that this message strengthens your faith Hearing preaching is necessary to fan the flames of faith. 
I find it in myself. I seek out preaching that I can hear that stirs my heart to keep going, to keep sacrificing, to keep living, to keep pushing for Jesus, even in the hard times. The preacher's passion invigorates my heart when I hear them. Invigorates my heart to trust Jesus more in those hard times. We realise that watching through a screen is not ideal. We long to be back together when we can be together. God comes amongst us by a special, in a special way by his Holy Spirit as the church gathers. That's what we long for. There is a strength in numbers, not merely physically, but spiritually, when we are together. Which is, so, which is why it's so sad that we can't meet right now together. It's something we long to do. We look forward to do when it is safe. When it is safe, we'll be able to do that again. And it will lift our spirits. In this year that I've dubbed of community, we look forward to the easing of COVID and that importance again of the gathering of God's people together. When you think about uh, elite sports people, even athletes can't do it on their own. Even when what they're doing is a solitary exercise. You know, you think of like marathon runners and stuff. They don't ever do it on their own. They have a whole team behind them. Managers, physios, psychologists or whatever to enable them to compete at the highest level. We need each other to strengthen our belief, our will, our heart through sometimes the hard slog of the marathon of life. We need people shouting us on. We need people to push us on. That personal encouragement from Paul to the, to the, to the church where he spoke was so important. Paul and Barnabas went back to the place that almost saw the death of them to encourage those Christians, to strengthen those Christians in their hard times. For now we must stay safe from COVID. For now we must encourage from a distance. But the time will come when we will gather again to keep going, keep growing in faith, to keep trusting, to keep clinging to Jesus. Trust Jesus even when it's hard. He knows what he is doing. Because it is the hard times and the hard things that we do that define who we are as people, where our priorities lie, what our purpose is in life. We must, must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. So let me encourage you. Choose a hard life. <laughs> Choose a poorer life. Choose a life of sacrifice. Choose others over yourself. Choose Jesus and cling to him in those hard times. Because that is where we get our ultimate purpose. Our ultimate joy. Our ultimate satisfaction. The hard things reveal to us the deepest heart, deepest strength in trusting Jesus. In the hard times, we may find a depth of experience with God as he ministers to us by his Holy Spirit through others to encourage and strengthen us. In the hard times, may the church be galvanized together in the united strength of faith together. May we be like a sports team that pushes through together, finding our strength, our hope, our trust in Jesus. Let's pray. Father God, we want to come to you acknowledging the difficulty and tragedy of life so often. But Father, we know you love to bring 
good out of bad situations, good out of the awfulness of life. Thank you for the cross where that is ultimately shown, that you brought good even out of the most evil act of the cross. But Father, we pray that you would bring good out of our lives as well, that in those hardship times, that you would minister to us, to give us not a physical strength, but a strength of soul, a strength of heart, a strength of faith. That we would, in all times, cling to Jesus, in our trust in Jesus. Father God, thank you for what he has done for us. Help us to keep our home in heaven rather than on earth. Help us to have that perspective on the hard things of our life. Help us to see and find joy and satisfaction through in your strength overcoming the hardships of life as we head into the kingdom of God eternally. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Loving Heavenly Father, we praise and thank you for your love for us and that we can be here in your presence. Father, we thank you for all your blessings. At this time of Lent, we consider the wonder of the love of our Lord Jesus who came to earth to show us the Father and to give his life on the cross that we might be forgiven our sins. We thank you for the result of the lockdown that has helped to reduce the number of COVID cases. We pray for those who are caring for those with the COVID in the hospitals and in the care homes. We thank you for the effort that so many are putting in and we pray that you will guide them as they suffer from extreme pressure. We thank you for the gifts that they all have. And we know that we can trust you however hard the circumstances are. We pray for all the families that are struggling with homeschooling. And we thank you for the parents and the teachers that are guiding our children through this difficult time. We pray for our church leaders and all those who are responsible for running our churches. We pray for the PCC meeting on Monday we thank you for those that run our churches and care for us. We thank you for the warmer weather, the warmth of the sun, and the joy of the spring and the flowers that are coming up. And we look forward to a time when things can be more normal. We commit ourselves and all of those that we love into your hands. We pray also for our Queen, and the royal family. We pray for Prince Philip and pray that he will soon be able to return home. We thank you that we can come to you and put our trust in you for all times. In Jesus' precious name we pray. Amen. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen.
in the special collect prayer for today. Almighty God, whose Son, Jesus Christ, fasted 40 days in the wilderness and was tempted as we are, yet without sin, give us the grace to discipline ourselves in obedience to your Spirit, and as you know our weakness, so that we may know your power to save. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly trust in Jesus name my hope is built on nothing less then Jesus' blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame But wholly trust in Jesus' name Christ alone, cornerstone Strong in the Savior's love through the storm, He is Lord, Lord of all. When darkness seems to hide His face, I rest on Him.
Well, thank you for joining us today for our service here at Fountain Uh Let's finish with a prayer of blessing for our week. May the Father from whom every family on earth and heaven receives its name strengthen you with his Spirit in your inner being so that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith and that knowing his love broad, long, deep and high beyond our knowledge you may be filled with the fullness of of God. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be amongst us and remain with us always. Amen.